guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have a doll repaint for y'all today and this is a bug doll repaint. So I was invited to partake in a collaboration where we all made dolls inspired by bugs. Um, and there's some really talented peeps in this club. We have Lady Dynamite Creates, Josephine's Creatures, Enchantarium, I Could Do That DIY, and Creepy Kitty Creations. I'm gonna have everybody linked down in the description box, so definitely go check them out. So, bugs. Um, I hate bugs. Like, a lot. <laughs> like, I I really, really, really hate bugs. Um, and I I'm so, like, scared of them that when they come in my apartment, I can't even, like, kill them or have them leave. I have to, like, get somebody else to take care of it because I'm just a complete baby with bugs. So, I was actually getting real itchy when we were all exchanging pictures of bugs we were gonna do. <laughs> it just was like, ugh, ugh, I hate them. But, a bug that I can definitely get behind, because I feel like it's barely a bug, <laughs> or it looks barely like a bug, is the poodle moth. Or at least what I thought was the poodle moth because the photo that goes around on the internet of the poodle moth is actually not a real bug. This is a felt project that someone made. The photo or the moth that is closest to what a poodle moth that people say is a poodle moth is actually a silk moth. It's very confusing. <laughs> so I thought I was making a poodle moth but it actually turned out to be a silk moth but I was actually following a picture of a felt project so it is what it is. For bases, I was debating between Spectre Vondergeist, Bonita Femur, or Bunny Blanc. Um, Spectre, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make, like, the doll's gonna be very white, but I didn't know if I wanted to make her, like, just completely white. <laughs> so I picked her up as an option, and then Bonita Femur is genuinely part moth, part skeleton, which don't understand the logistics of that, but whatever. Bunny Blanc was an option because I thought she's very pale, but there would at least be a little bit of contrast with the mostly white color palette. I ended up going with Bunny because I thought that Spectra would be a little bit too much white and then Bonita is just really bright pink and also very skeletal, which wasn't really where I wanted to take this. I do the basics of prepping the doll. So I pop her head off with hot water and then I scrape the inside of her head around with a screwdriver and then I pull all the glue plugs out through the neck hole with needle nose pliers. And for some reason I don't have footage of this, but I did also take her paint off with 100% acetone. I'm prepping the yarn by tying it around this thing um, and then I'm brushing it out with a cap brush and straightening it with my flat iron. It's really unfortunate because I chose yarn because it is what I'm most comfortable with but also because I'm giving her a short hairstyle. I'm literally giving her the hairstyle that she had with her normal hair. It was just too platinum blonde as opposed to white and it just sucks because it's a lot of work for like literally a shade off but whatever. Um, so we're just looping that hair or yarn around my finger and then looping it around the reboot tool at the top of it and then plunging it into the head. She's done and she'd be looking like cousin it, but not for long. Give her a minute. All right, it's gonna be stunning. To secure all that hair into place, I squeeze some fabri glue in through the neck hole. After that hair is done, I am on to the face up. So I spray the doll three times with Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask, and we start painting. Another reason why I chose Bunny Blanc was because she has these gigantic molded on kind of bug-like eyes uh, that I thought would work really well for a bug. So we're gonna be staying pretty close to that molding. I'm making it a little bit smaller, but they're still really big. For this eye color, so I'm about to say something that is possibly a little controversial. I'm about to drop a bomb on y'all. Not really, it's not that bad. But when you get into this hobby, uh, basically everybody tells you to use watercolor pencils. I use watercolor pencils and I use them because everybody told me to use watercolor pencils. But I've come to realize over the years that there are people in this hobby who have been working for years on dolls and doing repaints and all that and they use normal colored pencils and their repaints look fine. So what I'm trying to say is, it's all cap. Everyone's liars. No, I don't actually think that. I think that, I guess somebody said that the colored pencils would react weirdly because there's oil in them and it reacts weirdly with MSC, but obviously that's not the case because there's people who have used normal colored pencils for years <laughs> and it doesn't react weirdly. Um, so I've just come to the conclusion that I'm gonna use some normal colored pencils when I want to because there's some pretty ass colors. Back to the repaint, I colored in her eye color with a normal colored pencil. Um, these Holbin ones, there's lots of really pretty colors, so I picked them up. And I made the whites of her eyes black because she a bug beach. I feel like for the first two layers of this face up, she looks very scary. So please keep that in mind. She's gonna be fine. She's gonna pull through. She's at her awkward phase. I shade around her face with blue, brown, a little bit of black, red, pink, white, 
and purple pastels. For the lips, we tap on a little bit of red pastel and then I clean it up with a kneaded eraser. We love a good waterline, so I'm coloring in her waterline with a little bit of peachy pencil. In honor of it being 30 degrees here, I'm like so cold right now, <laughs> I am taking some red pastel and I'm tapping it onto her cheeks. And I have a really spiky brush. This spiky brush is what's giving it that sort of blotchy look, like blotchy natural look. I'm also applying some purple pastel with the same brush around the forehead and the eyes. With me pointy Q-tip, I tap some of that red pastel on the center of her upper and lower lip to give her like a bitten look, like she's eaten some popsicles. It's a mood. Well-known fact, we love blue here, uh, so I'm just adding blue like everywhere. I also feel like it adds to like she's cold, you know, she's like a cold moth even though she got like a lot of fur on. She looks like she lives in the Arctic, but I'm putting it around her brow bone, underneath her eyes, chin, ears, all of it. I love blushing ears, by the way, like get into it, all right? It's the season for ears, all right? We need we need to add details there. We also are adding some veins um, around the eyes, uh, on the forehead, underneath the chin. The ears, ears have veins too. Love a good ear vein. <laughs> serial killer um, but I'm just putting these their branch like pencil marks around the eyes forehead chin all of it to add a little bit of depth to that waterline I'm taking a dark brownish red pencil with my little nubbin and I'm coloring in the inner and the outer portion I wanted the eye color to have a little bit more of a gradient, so I took a red pastel and my handy dandy Q-tip and I added that to the top of the eye underneath the eyelid. For the pupil, I created a circle with a dark red, but then I'm also adding some flicks outward so that it looks more of like a sort of starburst look um, and it's not a completely defined circle. We need lip wrinkles, so I am taking my bright red pencil and I'm outlining the upper lip, like where the cupid's bow is, and then I'm adding some lines from that going downward on that upper lip, and then I'm going to the middle line and flicking some lines down from that for the lower lip. The initial lines that I laid down with my red pencil when I was sketching in her eye shape sort of disappeared with all the shading, so I'm taking a dark purple pencil and I'm just going over those lines. On to highlights, so white pastel would take, and this is a white pan pastel, by far our best white uh, pastel that I've ever used, but I'm putting this around the brow bone, the nostrils, the inner corner. To deepen up the black of her eyes and make her look even more possessed, we're going over it with some black wash paint. To shade those eyes even more, I'm taking black pastel and I'm just tapping this in the inner and the outer portion of the eyelid, the upper lid. Her eyes are very, very dark, um, so we need to bring back some life, some highlights. So I take a white pencil and I'm just adding some of that around the upper lid, the inner corner. Um, around the lips, just everywhere to really bring back definition into those eyes.
To really get the effect of lip lines, I took my light nude and I added some flicks on the lower lip, as well as a highlight to the waterline. With a black pencil, I wanted her to really have that kind of fuzzy, sort of like fractally look that eyes have. So I'm flicking some lines coming from the black part of the eye into the center. For further shading on those eyes, I tap black pastel right below the upper lid. Brows! So since I wanted her to be very white, um, I'm giving her white brows. What I've liked to do with white brows though is I'll lay down a slightly darker, like light brownish pastel for the brow, and then I'll go over top of that with my pencil and my paint, just so that it's not like the white on top of like the very pale shade of her skin, it stands out a little bit more. I didn't want her to have like the bushiest of brows. I wanted her to look pretty sweet in the end. Um, like she a bug, but she sweet, you know? She a sweetheart. So we're just adding just a couple of flicks with white gouache. Lately, I've been really digging these Winsor Newton fine liners. I think they're really good for this step that I'm doing here where I'm adding little flicks of black going all around the eye. And I also think they work really well for lashes. So if you're someone who struggle buses through lashes, I would definitely recommend picking up one of these because they come in really thin points. Also, if you want to erase it and you work quickly, you can take a little bit of water on a Q-tip or something small and rub it off and it comes off. For lip lines lately, I've been really liking just doing layers and layers of lines. I feel like that's how, when I've seen really beautiful BJD lip lines, that's how they do it. So I've been trying to just do more lip lines recently. So I did pencils like lip lines and now I'm going in with paint and just doing further lip lines with that. It's the same thing though, it's just flicks going up or down, depending on which lip you're doing. To further enhance those highlights that we put down with pencil, I'm going over certain areas with some white paint. Her eyes are real dark on the outer and the inner portion of the upper eyelid, so I'm taking a little bit of Pearl X pigment and I'm tapping that in those areas just so it brightens it up like a little bit. Maybe it looks like eyeshadow. With some pink paint, I flicked some highlight lines going all around her eye, radiating out from the pupil. So this next step is where I struggle bust. I originally wanted to give her white lashes. Um, and I originally gave her a very thick lash line and then I added some flicks coming out and it just was not cute. Um, I found that I was also fighting with the paint because the paint just kept breaking apart. It wasn't giving me like a smooth line. This paint is white gouache by the way that I'm using here. I also found that I was fighting with her eye molding. It was enhancing the grainy line quality that I was getting. It was just overall just not it sis. So I ended up wiping that. If I do this in the future, I'm going to do it on a doll with a flat eye mold and also probably just do a couple flicks coming out from the eye instead of a whole chunky lash line. With all that being said, I went back to my trusty black lash um, and I went in with pencil first and then I'm going to be going over it with some paint.
Since her whole eye area is just very black, I wanted to bring back a line for the lash line with my metallic red paint, so I'm just going over that area. Of course, every poodle moth slash silk moth needs sparkles, so we're adding those all over her face. Um, I used my Macro Pearlix pigment and put that all over her face, and then I used Interference Red and put that on her lower lash line. For the eye shine, I feel like I have many a eye shine style lately, but I wanted to do my kind of pointy one that is on the upper part of the eye, so I'm doing that with white gouache. We love a teary-eyed doll here <laughs> lately. I feel like you know what I like with like the flushed cheeks and all that, like the pink nose and the teary eyes. I think I just like when my dolls look like they're about to cry. Okay, it's a mood. I'm tapping metallic rose gold paint onto the waterline. And then we're gonna take some white and I'm tapping that on the waterline. I'm also putting some dots on the cheeks, on the nose and the corners of the lips. To add a bit of a separation between those lashes, I'm adding some flicks of white. Mita me a gloss, so I'm just adding that to the lips. I also add a little dab to the nose because um, it looks healthy, it makes her look alive, it gets the people going, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> this is how her face up turned out, and I must say, She's pretty stinking cute, okay? <laughs> um, I just, she's like my little bug girl and I love her so much. We're gonna be cutting her hair into a bob, so this is pretty simple. I'm just cutting some blunt cuts. Um, I made her bangs pretty short. Her bangs were like a nightmare, like see how they're sticking straight up, okay? I had to basically wrap saran wrap around her head. I did this for literally days <laughs> um, and it was still sticking out a little bit. Um, I tried like everything, okay? It just, I think this is just what happens with yarn. There's just not a lot of weight to it, so I think it just wants to boing. On to the wings. So my favorite way to do wings is to do magnetized ones because it just makes my life easier. It makes them removable. Um, so I'm drilling a hole into the back. I probably should have done this before I did the face up, but you know what? Sometimes we work backwards on this channel. It's really effective. To clean up the drill hole, I'm using my carving tools. I put a little bit of epoxy into the hole and then I put the magnet into the hole and then I smooth it all out and it looks all nice. We gotta paint that pink because that's the color of her skin. I also sanded off her panties. Uh, I did that here. I always do that off camera just because like sanding is annoying to film. And I always do it on the floor. And it's boring, so nobody needs to see it. Uh, but I moved on to blushing her body. I'm doing that with the same tones that I used in her face. So pinks, reds, purples, browns, stuff like that. Bunny Blanc wears gloves and I wanted to emphasize her buttons so I painted them gold. This is her body all finished being blushed. And I just love, honestly, I love these Ever After High Bodies. I don't know if I love these or I love the new Monster High Bodies more. They're both pretty great. Um, but we're given her antenna and never in my life did I think I'd use pipe cleaners on a doll repaint, but here we are. So I'm using these black pipe cleaners. I trimmed down the top and made it pointy and I'm hot gluing them in place. On to clothes and finally making the wings. So I wanted this doll to just be like everything fluffy in the world. So she's very soft and we're using a lot of nice fluffy uh, fabric, but for the wings, I'm going to be using felt, which is also kind of fluffy. Um, and I cut out the shape 
Did y'all know there's two different types of felt? I didn't know that. This is the stiff kind. Um, there's also a soft kind. But I am sketching in the general design of the wings with a fabric pencil. It's very, very light, so you can barely see it. The design is pretty simplistic. I'm going to be going over those lines that I sketched in with some pastel. The lines are very fuzzy and I want to sharpen it up a little bit, so I'm taking a dark brown pencil and going over the lines. To sharpen up the line even more, I'm taking that Winsor Newton fine liner and just doing the same thing that I did with the brown pencil, but doing it uh, just lesser, like not doing it as much. These pens are pretty great because something that I found when I was using Micron pens is those just stop working basically if you go over anything that isn't paper um, pretty quickly. These are, I guess, kind of heavy duty. They don't do that. I thought the wings were like a little bit too sharp on the edges, so I wanted to fuzzify them a little bit with some yarn. I'm taking my craft glue and putting that all around the sides, and then I'm just wrapping yarn around it. This is the end result, and it's definitely much fluffier. Um, I'm hot gluing the bottom parts of the wings onto the top, and I really enjoy these wings. Um, they're very simple and they're very different because they're fluffy, uh, but I think they're pretty effective for what this moth's wings look like. I first put a magnet onto the middle of the wings with hot glue, and then I went back and reinforced it with epoxy glue. On to hair accessories. So I have this ribbon and I've been wanting to use it for literally years and today's the day. It's just a little bit big for like doll scale. I sewed this gathered tool to the very bottoms and then I hot glued a little bow on top. To fasten, or rather to stab that into her head, I used a needle, and I'm using a needle that has a golden ball on top just because it goes with her color scheme. Finally onto the clothes, so she has been naked for too long. I am giving her a velvet dress and I'm trimming it with some white fur. For the sleeves, I used this sparkly tool that you can literally barely see here, but I swear it's there. I'm hemming everything with Fabri-Tac glue. After all the hemming is done, we are taking the front and the back of the top of the dress and I'm sewing it together at the shoulders. I sewed fur to the neckline and added a little bit of lace. For the sleeve, she has like a bell sleeve going on so it's tight at the top and then it flares out. I'm gather stitching the bottom part of the sleeve. I sew that to the top part of the sleeve and then sew it in place. The dress is almost done though, so we are sewing up that side panel. I feel like the second aspect of this closing is that it, the first one is that it's fluffy and the second one is that there's pearls everywhere. I sewed some pearls onto her sleeves and then I'm sewing some to the top of the fur trim on her skirt. I gather stitch to the top of the skirt and then I sew the top of the dress to the bottom. 
This is the dress done. I also sewed some fasteners onto the back. I made her a belt. And I just want to show you guys, like, I felt like I was going crazy because this white next to all this other white just felt very blue. I asked my husband about it and he was like, that's opal. And I was like, okay, whatever. I think it's not too stark though. So I ended up keeping it. I made her some stockings off camera. I decided she needed a fluffy little heart bag because honestly, don't we all? Uh, I am cutting little snips to the top because I'm going to be hemming everything with some Fabri-Tac glue. I sewed the hearts together good side to good side only at the very bottom so that there's an opening on top because it's a purse. Once that's all sewn together, we gotta flip it. And I also need to add some handles because she needs handles. So I'm using some more pearls and I'm two, taking two of them and putting one on the one side and then the other side and I'm sewing them in place. As a final step, I added a little bow to the middle to finish her off. And um, this is like the cutest bag I've ever made. Not trying to toot my own horn, but it's real cute. On to shoes. So I just decided to use some shoes that I have in my stock box because um, I have an overwhelming amount of shoes in my stock box. So I'm cutting off this little detail. I think these were Dracula shoes. It's a molded on frill and we just don't need it. So I spray painted the shoes white and I painted the details with acrylic paint and I'm adding a fur trim. So I hemmed the very top of this the same way that I hemmed like literally everything else with fabri glue and I hot glue it in place. This is the finished result and they're simple but like they're nice uh so here she is with all of her accessories i really like how all her like fluffiness and velvetiness and all of it just feels very fitting for this cold weather um she kind of reminds me of, like a winter doll but she's not she's just a moth doll and yeah i feel like i learned a lot throughout this process about like poodle moths or not poodle moths or silk moths or whatever I also just think it's interesting and like a little wild how Google can just be like, no, this is this when it's just not. <laughs> um, and I remember being confused at the time when I was looking up this moth because if you scroll around a little bit, there are actual pictures of the actual poodle moth. There's just way more pictures of the silk moth saying that it's the poodle moth and even more pictures of that photo of the felt thing that's not even real. So it's, it's, it was a confusing process. Um, if you guys do like this video, please like this video. Please go check out all the other dolls in the collab. Again, they did a fantastic job, everyone did. Subscribe, makes me happy, and I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye.